us. I do want your thoughts on Godrej Properties as well. We have the management with us. It was a good quarterly performance by Godrej Properties in Q2. Bookings and collections as well as volumes also a healthy growth both sequentially and year on year. The company has also achieved 52% of FY24 revenue guidance and they say that they are on track to meet their FY24 guidance on all parameters. Uh, Sonal caught up with Pirod Shah Godrej, the executive chairman of Godrej Properties, to discuss their Q2 performance, began by asking about the project pipeline and the FY24 guidance. Listen in. We're very excited to see both uh, the external market for the residential real estate sector performing very well, demand levels across markets being quite high. We're extremely excited with uh, the numbers that we saw in the second quarter, which frankly surpassed our own expectations with growth of over 100% in bookings during the quarter. We have a pretty robust uh, launch pipeline for the second half of the financial year. Significant upcoming new launches in NCR with a few of the new Gurgaon projects we added uh, last year, we hope to launch uh, our, our large project in Delhi in Ashok Vihar. Um, we have several launches planned here in Mumbai, including a new phase of our Vikroli project, um, uh, upcoming launches as well in Pune, Bangalore and elsewhere. So overall, I think the pipeline looks uh, very full. We're hopeful uh, that we won't see uh, too many delays from a regulatory approval perspective. And if we're able to bring all of these projects to market, uh, I think it, we, we can expect to see a pretty strong year from a, from a bookings growth perspective. And hopefully we can go well past our, our guidance number. Okay, that's interesting. And you know, the second thing that I've noticed that's been happening with Godrish Properties in the last couple of months also is that you are on a land acquisition spree as well. And this is in your geographies that you're looking at as well. Uh, just wanted to understand in terms of pricing first, uh, are land prices also increasing the way we have seen it in home prices? And uh, second, what is the plan with land acquisition? Is there a kitty set aside? Um, is, there a, uh, is there a measurement that you have in mind as well? Yeah, actually, you know, a few years ago, our sense was that when the market was in a downturn, that things were likely to turn and turn quite dramatically, and that it would hold us in good stead to do kind of disproportionate levels of business development to really strengthen our portfolio when land values we thought were at reasonable levels, and when the projects that we acquired were likely to be largely developed in a rising market. So far, I'm happy to say that that thesis is playing out uh, pretty much as we'd expected. Um, we have done done quite disproportionate business development in the last few years. For example, last year, where we had about 12,000 crore, a little over 12,000 crore of booking value, our business development locked in a future booking value of about 32,000 crore, which again was intentionally disproportionate to immediate scale with this idea that it will allow us to deliver kind of more rapid growth in an improving market. Um, I think the market now in many places is already very well established, already quite heated, I would say, in places like, like NCR, and, and land prices certainly have accordingly corrected as well. Um, so business development is no longer the number one focus for the company. We feel for the next two or three years, the existing portfolio of projects we have can deliver the kind of uh, you know fairly rapid growth we want to ensure we deliver. And so the biggest priority is now bringing all of these projects we've added over the last few years to market through new launches over the coming quarters. That said, of course, that doesn't mean that business development will, will halt entirely, quite the, quite the contrary. We will certainly continue to do targeted business development in markets where we feel our portfolio needs to be further strengthened. We'll also, of course, look to ensure that we're replacing uh, what we're selling, but we're not anticipating and, and do not want another kind of year like last year where we had very disproportionate business development because we think the the market is no longer, first of all, quite as attractive as it was. And secondly, we have never been a company that's believed in land banking or just adding projects that we you know, intend to develop at a later stage. And the portfolio from an immediate development perspective is already looking very full and very capable of delivering the kind of growth we want to see. Okay, you interestingly mentioned that markets are heating up uh, when it comes to the NCR region and that continues to be your biggest portfolio. Are you seeing some pricing wars coming in as well? Because we do have a lot of players which are looking at NCR market. You do have established players as, the, as well. They're big ones like yourself. What we've seen in our recent projects is very strong demand at prices that are you know, substantially higher than they were uh, a couple of years ago. So we're not, as of now, seeing any pressure on pricing. If anything, it's, it's continuing to move up. 
uh, quite a bit over the past few quarters. So when you say quite a bit and prices higher than what you were expecting, can we say high double digits? Because some of the analysts estimated that they were 30 to 17 percent higher than what the company themselves expected. Yeah, that sounds sounds about right in in some of these individual projects. Of course, it's also not a you know market by market question. Each project, um, you know, depends on on the, the the sort of specifics of that micro market. But yes, in in some parts of the NCR, I think it is double digit kind of increases in prices that we're talking about. Okay, so while things are looking good, demand is higher. One thing that is. Uh... Uh, coming on your balance sheet, and that's the higher debt. It has increased in quarter two as well to levels of around 6,000 crore rupees. Your net gearing has come at an 11 quarter high. What are the plans here? Till what level of net gearing will you be comfortable? And uh, one of the analysts also said that you need to improve the cash flows in, in order to ensure that there's comfort. What is the plan here? No, I think, again, this is very much according to our own internal plan. Um, you know, the whole goal was to raise equity capital um, a few years ago, use that capital to ensure that we've strengthened the balance sheet that we've created the bandwidth to go out and, you know, source the kind of aggressive business development we wanted to do over the past two, three years. Fortunately, that has happened particularly last year. And as expected, as a result of that, our gearing levels have gone up. We have guided, actually, ever since our IPO more than 10 years ago, that the, the broad comfort range we have from a gearing perspective is about one is to one. We've since revised that downwards a it actually to 0 0.5 is to 1 to 1 is to 1. Right? We used to say 1 is to 1 to 1.5 is to 1. So we're still very much within that range. Um, so we don't see any, any real concern there. And operating cash flows will, we think, very significantly increase from the upcoming year onwards. You know, the way the real estate sector works is first you do the business development. Uh, you, that's obviously a capital expenditure where you see outflows. You then do the bookings, which lock in the future cash flows, but don't create much immediate cash flow in a new launch sense, because if you're doing a new launch, your bookings only get typically immediately generate five to 10% of the overall value as upfront cash flow. And then the rest of that cash is collected as the project is constructed. So there's no, in our view, great rock science here if we're seeing the kind of business development growth and, and bookings growth um, that we have seen over the recent past we are quite confident that uh, collections are, are going to strongly follow and it's not that, that that's not already visible we had over 40 percent growth in collections last year we expect for the first time to cross 10,000 crore in collections in the current financial year even in this past quarter while not keeping pace with bookings we did see collections grow by about 23 percent Okay, that's the Godrich Properties Management uh, in conversation with my colleague Sonal uh, and uh, some outlook uh, being shared there as well.